Sometimes instructors want you to use scholarly articles, also called peer-reviewed or academic articles, in your research. This is because those articles go through a more thorough process to get published, so the information in these articles is more trustworthy. Scholarly articles are written by experts in a discipline and are intended to be read by other experts in that discipline, along with researchers and students like you. But this means the articles contain a lot of technical and specialized language, which means sometimes they're difficult for non-experts to understand. Luckily, there are some tricks we can use to help understand scholarly articles more easily. Let's look at an article to see how to hack it, make it easier to understand. First, it helps to know that many scholarly articles, but not all, have specific sections, introduction, methods, results, conclusion, and or discussion. The first step is to look at the article title. Scholarly articles usually have long descriptive titles telling us exactly what they're about. In this example, we can tell this article is about fake news and the third person effect on, of it. We don't yet know what third person effect means, but I'm certain the article will tell us. The article is also going to talk about fake news regulation and media literacy interventions. Don't worry if you're not entirely sure what that means yet. Next, we should read the abstract, which is a summary of the article. From the first line, we can see that the authors were thinking about the effect of fake news on voters' decisions. We can also see that they surveyed 1,299 people. Whenever you see n equals, that means the number that follows is the number of people they involved in their research. The authors introduce another term, third-person perception, which is close to the term in the title, third-person effects. The authors also briefly define third-person perception here in the abstract. Then they start to get technical, so let's skip that for a moment. We're is interested in the results though, but I'm still not sure what all of the terms in the abstract mean. Let's be patient and assume the article will help us with that. Next, the authors talk about what their findings revealed about combating fake news, specifically with regards to media literacy and media regulation, terms that we originally saw in the article title. The next step is to read or skim the introduction. This will give us the context and background information about the research that was done. Introductions also include something called a literature review, which simply means that before the authors did their research and wrote this article, they read what other expos experts wrote on this same topic and related topics. It's similar to what students do for research papers. This particular article has a main introduction and then uses subheadings to define terminology. For example, we can see that third-person perception is abbreviated as TPP, and we're given a definition here. Then the authors explain some aspects of TPP, so we have the necessary background. Keep in mind, sometimes we will still encounter terminology in the article that's difficult to understand, because researchers often use terms that non-experts aren't as familiar with, so we might have to look up some of the terminology from the article if it's not defined in the introduction. Although it might feel like cheating, the next thing you should do is jump to the end of the article to the conclusion or discussion. Some articles will have both of these sections, some won't. We're skipping two sections for now, method and results, but we'll come back to those later. We should skim the discussion and conclusion because this is where the authors tell us what they learned by doing their research. And right away, we're learning some interesting facts. For example, individuals regarded others as more susceptible than themselves to the potential harmful effects of fake news. Skimming down further, I can see that strong Republican and Democrats believe that other party members are more vulnerable to the effects of fake news. And as I keep going down later, the final sentence in the discussion, first section of the discussion, if individuals perceive fake news to have effects on others, educating others is more reasonable than regulating everyone's freedom of speech. 
and so on. The conclusion lists further steps that can be taken when others are doing research on this topic. So what about those sections we skipped? After the introduction is the method section, also sometimes called methodology. This is where the authors explain the details of how they did their research. They will tell us who participated in the research, what type of research they did, and the measures they used. After the method section is the results section. From that heading, we might think this is the section we should read, but honestly, the results can be hard to understand on their own. They're mostly statistics and math, plus some tables or charts from time to time. Unless we're planning to duplicate this research study, we don't need to read the method and results sections in great detail. We might use a table or chart from the results section. Finally, just like students have to do, the authors included a list of all the sources they used in their research, and this article has a very lengthy references list. This is an excellent place to find additional articles that you might want to use in your research, so be sure to look through the references. If you need help finding an article from the references list or any information for your research needs, be sure to contact your librarians for assistance.